Good morning, Mortgage Coach Community. Dave Savage. It's Tuesday morning. Every Tuesday, 9 o'clock, we are here to put on the Mortgage Industry's Best Sales Meeting. And, uh, and I have a feeling that today's call is going to be special. I have been trying to get this gentleman uh, into the Mortgage Coach Community. Brian, for how many years, then? A lot. Probably six or seven now. Yeah, six or seven. Uh, you know, many of you who are watching this, you know Ryan Grant. Um, to say he's a top producer would be an understatement. I mean, he's one of America's most successful mortgage leaders. Uh, he's built an incredible team in Irvine, California. Ryan, welcome to the Mortgage Coach community, brother. Thank you, Dave, and thank you everyone for having me. Excited to be here. Good. Well, I am I'm pumped that you are following some other folks on your team and starting to use Mortgage Coach to power your advice. And I am I'm looking forward to hearing your scripts and how you're weaving the total cost analysis into everything you're doing. But but let's just start for anyone who hasn't, you know, heard your story at Sales Mastery. Uh, Everyone, Ryan's been on the stage at Sales Mastery. How many, how many years have you been on stage there? I think four now. Yeah, four. Four, and he's going to be on stage again this year. And I can tell you that Todd Duncan doesn't do that very often. I mean, he is, is very intentional about, oh, we always got to have new people. But Ryan, he thinks, is so special that he just keeps bringing you back. So I can't wait to see what you and Todd talk about on stage this year. But, but why don't you start with just telling everybody in the community a little bit about your mortgage practice? Yeah, uh, so we operate here out of Irvine, California, and Orange County. Uh, I run uh, my team here, which is the Ryan Grant team. I also run our branch, and then I run a region of Fairway Mortgage, uh, which right now is, is mainly Southern California. And uh, we are really unique in the sense of kind of how we operate in the eyes of the consumer. Uh, we take a very holistic financial approach when it comes to helping our clients now and into the future. Uh, we have a very clear value proposition for the consumer that helps them really differentiate us versus an average you know, mortgage lender or mortgage situation. Uh, so not only do we focus on the value to the consumer, we focus a lot on the consumer experience. And uh, it's really helped us to become the, you know, one of the number one lending teams in, in the country and, and number one in Orange County. And it's something that you know, being number one is great, but we're more proud of the way that we help our clients and, and how we help them as opposed to how many we help. Um, and I think that's what really you know, keeps driving us is how can we add more value to the consumer? Uh, how can we help you know, change their life? How can we help them grow generational wealth, make proactive, smart decisions about real estate or finance and really set goals and plan for the future? Um, we just really believe that the mortgage professional of the future is going to help clients decide to buy, sell, or finance real estate before the client comes to that realization on their own. Uh, so our clients really take that, uh, take that to heart and they use us constantly uh, in between transactions to help plan and, and bounce ideas off of and, and, and set goals for the future, which is why the majority of my team has been using Mortgage Coach for a long time now. Um, we are a little late to the game, but we're excited to use Mortgage Coach to continue to help our clients with the planning, the analysis, the foresight, and the helping them kind of take the next steps in the real estate journey. Cool. So, I mean, anybody that heard that, I mean, he did not sound like the typical loan officer. I mean, he sounded like someone that at a values level is committed to helping families build wealth faster by making smarter mortgage and financial decisions. Uh, so, so let's, let's talk about your mortgage. Why, you know, like, why are you a, a mortgage professional? Like what, What's your commitment to this industry and, you know, where's that come from? Yeah, I mean, it, I'd be lying if I said that it started out the way that we are today. It wasn't, it, it's evolved into this. And I think it evolved into it out of necessity. Um, kind of initially, selfishly, I just needed a way to differentiate what we do versus what the other 500,000 licensed mortgage professionals do. Uh, and then over time, I saw the power that it actually had. And then we, that really drove us, right? Because we were able to see how fundamental we were in helping clients grow wealth and make good decisions and the impact we were having on not only their lives, but their children's lives. And, you know, the more we look at, you know, the divide in this wealth gap in the country, the more we realize that the average consumer just needs more help, right? They need guidance, advice, education. And most of the consumers in America today don't know where to go to get that information. Uh, you know, if you want to buy a house today, or if you want to buy an investment property, or if you're interested in, you know, potentially lowering your rate, who do you call for advice and guidance and education without being sold something, right? And 
The short answer is probably no one. There's not a lot of people that really operate that way. And so the consumer is very defensive. They feel like they need to do it all on their own. And, you know, 44% of Americans have some form of regret within one to two years after they buy a home, which is a truly a study they did a few years back. And that's in large part because they're doing things on their own accord. They're, they're thinking about stuff without necessarily having all of the information. And so over time, we just started to realize it's a more of a necessity for our clients and for our community uh, than we ever knew it to be. And that's kind of what drives us today. Love that. Love that. And, you know, when I founded Mortgage Coach, it was originally just competitive differentiation, wanted to improve my conversion, but it's grown into this, you know, this mission to change how people get into mortgage debt. You know, that while I, we charge the mortgage industry for Mortgage Coach, but really we just want to, we want to help people get into mortgage debt more intelligently yeah. and, and build wealth with real estate more effectively. So I, I love that. And it's cool to see how you've evolved your value prop. So for anyone that's listening, you know, you say you're number one in Orange County, you know, what kind of loan volume are you doing? How many families are you, you you're meeting with monthly and how many families are you serving with a mortgage? Uh, yeah, last month um, we helped about 130 families. Um, you know, my team was about 50 of that. And then this month we'll probably be a little north of 50 transactions. Usually we'll average, you know, 30 to 35 and we'll do about 150 million give or take depending upon the year uh, this year will probably be a little north of that but um, you know again it, it's you know the volume is great the number of families we help is great but we had a little celebration at the end of the month last month uh, and the one thing I told my team to continue to focus on is it doesn't matter there's a lot of people that can help 130 families that's not the impressive part the impressive part is how we do it right the the care the the, the level in which we we Devo devote ourselves to the customer experience, right? The, the type of strategy that we put behind these 130 families. So, um, you know, I could have said a thousand or I could have said two, uh, but the only thing that really matters is how we're doing it and, and ultimately why we're doing it. And that's, that's what continues to, to make us push to, to be more valuable to the consumer. Well, I, I love, I love that. And, you know, when I, when I pushed this and promoted this in the Mortgage Coach Facebook group, I said something pretty bold, you know, I said, Hey, if you want your next 10 years to be better than your last 10 years, show up. And, and if you're new to the business, literally, if you listen carefully to this interview and then you implement what we're talking about, I mean, it's literally priceless. You know, uh, I talk to loan officers all the time. You know, most of the people I talk to are top producers or decision makers at mortgage companies. Cause you know, that's just the role I play. I'm always looking for, you know, people that are killing it at the highest level and then interviewing them for our community. But I, I also talk to struggling loan officers that, you know, aren't closing north of five loans a month. And, and, and I always hear that, oh, I don't have time. You know, it's like there's this, how fast can I quote a rate? And, and they don't give options. They give one option. And, and it's, it's about speed. And, and I hope you guys heard what you just heard. It's not about the volume. It's about the experience. And, and if you do want your next five years to be better as a referral based local originator, you literally need to create an experience for the family that they would write a check for. Like your advice, your experience was worth cash because you know, the digital mortgage wars are here. And, and if you're not delivering that local experience and you're not really helping people beyond just a mortgage transaction, your next 10 years will not be better than your past 10 years. And if you're new, you're going to be, you're going to be, you know, swimming up upstream. So, so let's walk through that perfect loan process. You know, that experience that you deliver, just give us a description at a high level, what that means, what that sounds like, and maybe some milestones along the way. Yeah. So every time we talk to a client, uh, we take them through uh, a very specific client intake document. Uh, we call it a dreams and goals call. Uh, but ultimately, you know, it's a very specific list of questions that encompasses every aspect of real estate and finance. You know, so, you know, as most mortgage professionals are really just asking about what it takes to qualify, right? So credit income and assets. Um, but we get into everything from insurance and protection to, you know, generational wealth planning to real estate and retirement. Uh, we talk a lot about, you know, helping mom and dad, helping children. Uh, we talk about estate planning. Uh, so we get into every single aspect of real estate and finance simply because we can't recommend a strategy to the consumer 
if we don't know everything about the client now and into the future. And so that's the first thing that our clients really recognize with us is that we ask a lot of questions that are not normal for them to be asked, right? And we have to actually prep them for that and say, hey, look, we're going to ask you a lot of questions here. If you've gone through the mortgage process before, you're probably not used to being asked. Uh, but there's a reason we're doing this, and it's because we can't give you the full guidance and advice that we know we need to if we don't have that information. So um, we spend you know, a good 20, 30 minutes on the phone asking those questions, and then we will schedule their in-person consultation. Uh, usually about 80% of our clients will meet with us in the office face-to-face. -face. Uh, we do what's called a pre-purchase consultation where we walk them through all their options. We kind of reiterate all the things we've gone over. Uh, if for some reason we can't meet with them, face-to-face uh, -face because of a geographic restriction. Uh, we'll use a Zoom webinar or some sort, some form of video. Uh, but ultimately, we want them to look at the, you know, the TCA. We want them to understand our presentation to them because most people just are really bad auditory learners. Uh, human beings are known to not learn well by just talking over the phone. Uh, so when we help them visualize it and when we can see their visceral reaction to what's on the screen, better helps us understand if they're understanding it or not, if we need to explain more, uh, if we need to go further into depth, uh, if there's a question or a concern. Uh, so meeting face-to-face -face and helping them understand by, while looking at the TCA is really important. Uh, so that consultation has been really the, the, the key differentiator for us just by you know, ensuring the client has that experience. And then ultimately when they leave, uh, you know, they go look for homes, they go into contract, when they go into contract, they come back in the office for what we call a contract meeting. Uh, and then we go through an updated TCA specific to that home and that time and that day. Uh, so it's all really you know, planned out. Uh, every client has the exact same experience uh, and then ultimately take them through the transaction. But the, the post-closing on is really where we believe the majority of our value lies to the consumer. We tell every single client the same thing. We say, look, we really enjoyed helping you, you know, buy this home or finance this home but it's going to pale in comparison to the value that we're going to, we're going to give to you from now moving forward, right? Over the next 30 plus years, we're going to be the most valuable person in your life when it comes to real estate and finance. And then we explain how we show them the process uh, and they start to really understand how we're going to be a proactive part of their lives from that point moving on. Love it. So, so Matthew, who just commented, asked some questions about your team. Uh, first of all, I want to encourage everyone listening to this call, whether you're in zoom, whether you're on Facebook, post your questions. We'll either get to them in this interview, we'll respond to them via text, or I have a feeling this will not be the last interview with Ryan Grant and Mortgage Coach. So maybe we'll do a, a call just around team leadership. Uh, I don't want to put you on the spot here, Ryan, but I, I think you're uniquely positioned to, to deliver some, some value and insight on just how to lead a team, how to grow a team, how to manage a team. But, but Matthew, I will get that question answered. And please, folks, put your questions down below. So, so let's do this. I don't want to immediately trans, trans, you know, go to the back of the sales process, but I want to get there in a minute. So we talk about, you know, the front end. We, I kind of got your script on how you position the, um, the twenty to thirty minute hopes and dreams and goals consultation. Yep. Uh, do you feel like you said the script, or is there more meat on the bones in terms of how do you? Because most loan officers, they have a five-minute transaction discovery conversation. Right. And it sounds like you have a 20 to 30-minute hopes, dreams, and goals conversation. Is there, is there any other scripting? Because they need help. Like, how do I – How do I? they wouldn't even feel comfortable asking those questions if they didn't have the right preframe. Do you feel like you nailed that, or is there more to, more to say on that? That would probably take an entire, you know, I actually just trained a big group of ours on that the other day. It was a full hour long training specifically on that one, one thing that we do, right? Because there's a, about a one and a half page script of all the questions we ask. And then we train on when we hear certain answers kind of what that triggers in our head, like why we think the way we think and what type of advice we give. Uh, when we bring in our financial planners, our state planning attorneys, our CPAs for help and guidance. Um, so it's a much more in-depth script than that, but you know, it's everything that you could possibly imagine when it comes to real estate and finance. Got it. All right. Well, let's do this. Cause I also want to be respectful folks. You guys will learn. And I, I think you've launched the art of ownership, but Ryan has built a platform that he has used to manage his process and to deliver to his customers. And he's also making it available to the industry. And, and that is a premium, you know, 
product. I don't want to ask you for things that conflict with that, but, but do know that any, you know, we're going to get questions like, what are the questions that you ask? Right. You know, what, what will you give us? And of course, what do people need to be part of your platform to get? So we'll, we'll get to that. Um, so let's do this script. Um, I think you guys got some good value in terms of how to have a more strategic conversation. What about when it comes to presenting that visual total cost analysis? What does that sound like? How do you position it? So when the family gets it, they're like, they're pumped. They're clicking on it. They're engaged. They understand what the delivery is. How does that sound? Yeah. So on that initial call, we always let them know, first of all, that the realtor sets up the referral quite strongly. So they'll let them know, Hey, you know, Ryan or his team's going to call you. They're going to ask you some questions and then, you know, they're going to invite you into the office to go over all of your options and they have a phenomenal presentation to help you with that. So the client already kind of knows what they're going to go through in advance. Uh, so then when we talk to them, we again, let them know, Hey, you know, when you come in, we're going to detail all these scenarios for you uh, with a really great software that'll help you understand all of your options. Uh, so then when they do come in the office, we just have the TCA up on the screen along with the rest of our presentation. We walk them through it and we just alter it as they're sitting there, right? So as we're having discussions and as we're looking at things, we'll put in different purchase prices, different down payment amounts. We'll look at, you know, depending upon the client's fear or need or desire, like if they are anticipating, well, I don't know if I should buy now or later, we use the cost of waiting uh, strategic template and we'll use that specifically for them. Uh, if someone's not sure, you know, if it makes sense to do a 15 or 30 year, uh, if it makes sense to, you know, from a budgeting perspective, if they'll still be able to hit retirement, uh, we can use, we can show them, you know, saving money or paying down the debt. Uh, so we can use a strategy template for that. Uh, you know, we can show them 30 versus 15 that, you know, we just use all the strategy templates and make cool. sure that we can help them better understand it right there. Let's do this. Let's spend about, I don't know, no more than 12 minutes, but let's spend like seven to 12 minutes. Let's pull up a couple TCAs, talk about that front end of the experience. Yeah. And then we'll spend the second half of this call on the back end of this experience. Um, so let's see what we're looking at here. Uh, I, I, want, I do want to call out like right now, guys, you're looking at the advice engine. Make sure you have strategy templates pulled up. So you'll notice uh, in the advice engine, there's that tab called strategy templates. But let's pull up a specific scenario. Um, looks like we're going to pull up a rent versus own. Um, kind of how would you position this? And by the way, what percentage of your clients are first time home buyers where you would go through a rent versus own? Yeah, we're a little over 40% first time home buyer. Uh, we work a lot with the millennial generation. Uh, a lot of our clients we've worked with in, in, in the years past are starting to refer their children to us, which is kind of cool for me to see at kind of that crossroads here. Um, you know, but a big part of what we do is we have to help renters see the future. Uh, because right now they're making the mistake of comparing apples to oranges, right? They're comparing where they don't want to live for even another year to where they do want to live for the next five to 10 years. And they're making an, an unequivalent comparison. And so we use Mortgage Coach and TCA to help them not only understand what future expectations of rent increases are, you know, what, you know, where they would ultimately want to rent if they don't buy a home. Uh, and then we show that with, you know, future expectation of real estate growth. And so, when people see this, uh, it's, you know, they go from thinking, you know, I probably shouldn't buy a home to it's actually financially irresponsible if I don't. Um, and it's a really cool thing, especially when we bring our realtor partners into that meeting to have the realtor partner see the psychological transformation that we help the client go through, through financial education. Uh, and normally they have no clue what their lender does or how they pre-approve people, but most real estate professionals, most clients don't realize that lenders are actually, if they're not using educational based financing you know, approaches, they're actually probably scaring the client more than they're, you know, encouraging them or motivating them to buy a home. If you just pre-approve someone and give them a letter, uh, because the payment itself will create this visceral reaction if the education and if they can't visualize the difference between renting and owning. And so this is one of the most common ones we use. Got it. So cool. So, we have put a link to this rent versus own in chat. If you're watching the recording of this, there'll be a link to this sample down below. I'm also going to ask Ryan to add a video to these. So it will be called just like an education on how he positions a rent versus own with a client and, and the video. So you'll get some scripting from that. Uh, if anybody hasn't ever seen the Todd Duncan, um, TCA, Todd gives some incredible scripting. 
we'll put a link down below on that too. Uh, so you can get a feel for that. Cause you know, Todd's been one of your, your closest mentors for years. And um, I think, you know, when I, when I hear your process and I see it, it's got high trust all over it. You only, you've like taken it to the highest level of a high trust experience. So what, what are some key concepts that you always show in the rep versus own, just so we can kind of give a little bit of tactical recommendations. What are some key components? And maybe we could scroll up to see the top. I want everybody to notice, you know, that Ryan's very intentional about his brand, his picture, you know, it's got Fairway, it's got the Ryan Grant team. So, you know, it's a personally branded advice experience. Mm -hmm. But what are, what are some of the things that you call out consistently when giving someone a, an educational experience for a first time home buyer? Yeah, the first thing we do is we ask them, you know, again, the, to, to kind of disarm their sales radar when they're in the, in the office. First thing we let them know is, hey, our goal with, you know, educating you today is not to convince you to buy a house. It's not to convince you to do a mortgage. It's not to convince you to be pre-approved. Our only goal is we want to give you all the education, advice, and guidance possible that by the end of the meeting, you can make a 100% confident and educated decision. And if that decision is it makes sense to buy a house, great. We'll take those next steps and we'll help you with that. And if we get to the end and we kind of both realize it doesn't make sense, then we'll develop a plan and a strategy and a timeline. So that makes them feel really good about everything I say afterwards, right? Because I've already given them the, the okay that it's, you know, by the end of it, they don't have so, to. So time out, time out. We are at 23 minutes into the call. That was like a mic drop script. Make sure you guys go back and re-listen to that. And, and don't just write it down and say what Ryan says, make it yours. But I, I just want to make sure 923, we got a homework assignment for everybody. Study that script, make it yours. And, and trust me, you will deliver more value to families, assuming that you do it each and every time and assuming you actually mean what you're saying. Like if you're just saying that, but you really just want to sell them on a mortgage, it will not work. But anyways, keep going, brother. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, the biggest thing that we've done as a group uh, and the biggest thing that we teach and kind of preach as a region here is we remove the outcome from the, from the conversation. Like we don't care if the client buys a home, refinances the home or not. Um, we just know if we can get really in depth with them in regards to their fears, their goals, their concerns, their issues, uh, ultimately we'll earn that business when the business makes sense. Um, so getting back to the kind of rent versus zone thing is one thing I'll say to the client is, all right, Mr. Smith, let's assume you don't buy a house. Let's assume we get to the end of this and it doesn't make sense. Could you happily and comfortably continue to live in the current rental situation you're in right now for the next five plus years? More often than not, the answer is going to be no, which is why he's sitting in front of you in the first place because he wants to move. He wants to buy a house. He wants something different. So I'd say the first thing we have to do to compare apples to apples is knowing that you won't stay in this current rental. If you don't buy a home, how much would it cost you to rent the home that you would rent for the next five years? Right. And that's going to be probably, I don't know, $500 more than what he's currently paying in rent. So that's where we start. Right. So in this case, we're showing that, you know, 3,084 total payment, you know, but his actual payment is probably going to be closer to twenty one, twenty two hundred dollars $2,200, which is, you know, where it stands. You know, you know, obviously we use the current rental increase. So if he's there, we, we would put, you know, 2,300, we'd go to 2,800 and then we'd use that rental increase number. And that's how you get your, your kind of, updated total payment number. So people don't take into consideration rent increases year over year. You know, they don't think about, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to have to rent something different if I don't buy. Uh, so psychologically you need to get them to the right starting point. Right. And so having them understand that, get the proper rent, you know, the future expectation of what they would pay on average over the next five years. Uh, that's really helpful uh, when you're helping them kind of analyze their options. And then so, we just, showed so, oh, yeah, good. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, and then we just show, you know, based upon what the consumer has access to for down payment, we'll show, you know, in this case, three and a half or 5% down because they don't have a significant liquidity. Um, one thing that we really, really focus on is post-closing liquidity with our clients. Uh, and, you know, one of the biggest regrets that most homeowners have after they buy a home is that they put too much money down. And so there's a lot of times when people are thinking they want to put 20% down and then they'll end up, you know, after talking with us, they'll put 10% down because it puts them in a safer post-closing situation. Um, but in this particular case, you know, we're showing two low down payment options. We're showing the differences, you know, in tax, tax strategies, you know, differences in MI. 
Um, and it just really helps them make more of an educated decision with our advice and guidance. And it's really rare for somebody to do something that we don't recommend uh, because they've really kind of given in to the fact that we really are, you know, professionals and we, we study this and we know what we're doing. So uh, they take this advice to heart. Love it. So guys, rent versus own for every first time home buyer. If you want to create a client for life, make sure if you didn't catch that footnote, he's bringing his realtor partners through this experience at least once. And sometimes he's having them join the client consultation. So, you know, he's, he's integrating this into the, not only the borrower experience, but the partner experience. So hopefully you, you got that footnote. So let's, let's go to the cost awaiting analysis, because that's a good one that would be for like move up buyers or someone that's on the fence. And, 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 and guys, here's the value. is not only is a cost awaiting extremely valuable to a family, it's extremely value, valuable to a referral partner. And here's the deal. Most loan officers can't do this. You know, they, they either can't do it, and even if they can do it, they don't do it because it is above and beyond the transactional experience. So walk us through um, a cost of waiting. Yeah, so cost of waiting is big right now. Um, you know, <clears throat> with what's happening with lower mortgage rates is not just allowing people to save money on their current mortgage. It's actually opening them up to be able to move up or move down or do something that, you know, a year ago they simply weren't able to, or didn't want to do. Right. I mean, there's people that have been in their homes now for five, six, seven years, they have phenomenal equity positions and they didn't want to move up from a three and a half percent rate to a five and a quarter rate, you know, last November. Um, so the rates moving down now help people with additional options that they didn't have access to or, or didn't want to take advantage of. And so, uh, we just met with a client yesterday who, you know, we owned a $1.2 million home, owed about 600000 on it. And he says, you know, I want to, he was 65, he's retired. He says, you know, I want to kind of stay in my home for probably three to five more years and then maybe downsize. And we went through a cost of waiting analysis with him and it just didn't make sense, right? It, it did not make sense for him to stick it out in that home for much longer. Uh, it made sense for him to liquidate that property, downsize now, have access to additional equity, uh, have more cash on hand, pay off some of his debt, and, and live a much better retirement. Um, so we showed him that through a cost of waiting. But ultimately, you know, this can be from someone who is deciding on cost of waiting between, I only have 5% down now, I want to wait and save till I get 20% down. I'm sure you guys hear that often. Um, you know, and then they'll, they'll, we'll go through, okay, how long is it going to take you to save to get to 20%? Uh, so we show them the 5% down now versus buying in four years. And it's real clear for them to see, oh, wait a minute. Like when you look at how much money I need to save and then how much money that I would miss out on in terms of equity and appreciation, it's, it's a, a phenomenal eye opener, right? But most people can't do that math. And even if they could, you know, they probably wouldn't even visualize it themselves. So uh, being able to show this to someone and saying, look, look at what you're giving up in terms of, of actual net worth over the next so many years. Um, that is something that, you know, we really, really strive to help our clients understand. And uh, this is a great way of accomplishing it. Okay, cool. Let's, um, let's wrap up on mortgage strategies with the invest the difference or prepayment. And then let's get into your client for life systems, processes, and platform. Yeah. So, um, you know, one thing I know, because I, I talked to Ryan earlier, you know, we both align on well, we align on a lot of things, but what's relevant to this part of the call is that if you're not giving a family options, you're delivering a transactional loan officer experience. If you're not showing people tactics like prepay your mortgage or invest the difference, you're delivering a loan officer transactional experience. And so Ryan, you know, in this particular scenario, you have one option that's like a 30 year fixed. You have one option where it's like the Dave Ramsey, let's prepay the mortgage. And then you have another option. It's like the Rick Edelman. Hey, let's invest that difference in program with your financial planner. So why don't you walk us through this? And then I, I do have a couple questions on this, but let's try to, you know, do this whole session in about five minutes. Yeah. So this is just, this is a question we get a lot, right? I mean, is, you know, should we pay down our mortgage or, you know, should we, hold back that difference and you know do something different with it 
uh, and Dave and I were talking before the call, it really is just a matter of where that client is in their life. Um, we typically recommend for younger individuals to, you know, especially with a you know 4% interest rate, you know, younger individuals have a long, you know, road ahead of them in terms of investing. Uh, they can be more risky with their investments. They can, you know, be a little bit more aggressive, uh, which allows for them to typically earn beyond that 4%, uh, especially that, you know, consuming it. In this particular situation, if that 4% has a significant tax benefit, um, it makes even more sense to keep that loan in place, uh, pay it down normally, and then reinvest the difference outside of the mortgage to grow your wealth at six plus percent. Um, and then we'd put them in touch with the financial planner and have their asset accumulation, you know, really grow outside of the mortgage uh, for future investment opportunities, future real estate opportunities, um, you know, greater liquidity, you know, having more, we call it dry powder in the event of, uh, of a market downturn. Uh, if someone's a little bit later in life and they're approaching retirement or they're in retirement, maybe they're fixed income and we want to try and get them to a debt-free retirement uh, as quickly as possible, then we show them a 30-year with principal reduction. Uh, we've been doing a lot of reverse mortgages as of late. And so sometimes we'll talk to people who are, let's say 55 uh, and we'll show them a strategy to where if they are to pay down their mortgage by X amount over the next seven years uh, that we could then when they turn 62, get them into reverse mortgage through retirement. Uh, so it just really depends upon the consumer, but you know, not only is it important to show somebody up front, it's important to show them to them every year, right? Uh, because, they're always going to have the question, you know, what should I do with any additional money? Should I pay down my mortgage? Should I invest it? You know, and we're able to send them updated TCAs as their life changes and evolves and allow them to see, you know, hey, if you put $500 more uh, into your mortgage, this is what it does. If you were to save $500 you know, per month or $300 per month in an asset accumulation, uh, then you know, we can show them what that looks like uh, long term. And again, we base it off of how long we have to look, right? If we have someone who's 30 years old, we can easily look 30 years out, right? That's right around the time they want to start approaching retirement. Uh, if someone's 65 years old, looking 30 years out probably isn't, doesn't make the most sense. Um, so really helpful to, to show this to clients. Uh, they appreciate it significantly. And the most important thing you can do when you show it to them is let them know, hey, look, this is how it looks like now, but things in your life could change. You could come into money, you could go into debt, all sorts of things could happen, right? And so every year we're going to update this for you and we're going to show you kind of you know, as your life changes and evolves, how we want to change and evolve our strategy with it. Love, love this. So let's go back to the homepage real quick of the advice engine. And I just want to, you know, shout out to everyone that you need to make sure you set up strategy templates. So if you're on this call and you don't have strategy templates set up, make sure that you have those uh, for, the, for the most common mortgage strategies that you're going to run. Ryan, what percentage of clients that you meet with, are you showing either a prepay or an asset accumulation? How often are you highlighting one of those strategies within the context of your consultation? 100% of the time. It doesn't make sense not to. I mean, just showing someone what their monthly payment is kind of feels like a restrictive option, right? Because like, okay, well, this is what I pay every month. Well, you could pay more and this is what it would do, right? And you could take any additional money that you have from a budgetary perspective and invest that difference. You know, especially if we're toggling back and forth between maybe an adjustable rate and a fixed rate and there's monthly savings. Okay, well, what do we, we have to show them what to do with that monthly savings or be kind of irresponsible. Um, same thing with a 15 versus 30, right? So um, every single time we show a client, you know, if you're saving money or if there's opportunity to have you know, additional capital. Um, this is what you can and most importantly should do with it. Beautiful. Well, let's stop sharing the screen here. And, and I hope everybody caught that. Like the, the definition of an advice-based consultative experience, you have to know their hopes, dreams, and their goals. Whether, and, it, and it takes more than five minutes to do that. You need to deliver options. And you always need to show either a prepay or an invest the difference. That's being a mortgage advisor. You're not a mortgage advisor if you're not doing those things. And there's a host of other things. So let's get into that client for life experience because multiple times I heard you say, and you need to review it annually. So, so you know, you, you've got this art of home ownership platform. Um, feel free, you know, anytime you think you want to show it visually, feel free to share your screen. But, but why don't you just start by describing it? What, what is the art of home ownership 
and what are some of the, the services and things that you provide to families? Yeah, um, and thank you again for allowing me to talk about it a bit, but essentially we created it selfishly again because we wanted the consumer to realize that we were not a fair comparison to other mortgage companies. Right? We, we don't sell the same product. Although we happen to do mortgages, it's a part of what we do from a bigger picture perspective for our clients. And we had to have a really clear and concise way of showing them that, right? And so I started to really think of, okay, what does the consumer want? What does the consumer need? And I started to realize we can't be short-sighted enough to think that we're going to give someone the largest asset they're ever going to have in their life in their home. We're going to give someone the largest debt they've ever had with their mortgage. And then we just say, good luck, go get them. Um, it's not, it's, it's kind of irresponsible, right? Because they're not going to know what they can do with it, what they should do with it. They're not going to be proactive about it. And, you know, we, we don't really feel bad about it because it's what's expected, right? And so the best of us will probably call our clients every year, touch base, ask them questions. Um, but we're not really necessarily proactive in our approach to the consumer. And so, now, what we wanted to do is show the consumer, hey, look, you know, most mortgage advisors are going to help you for 30 days, right? With us, we're going to help you for 30 plus years. Uh, we're going to talk to you about how we help you before the transaction, which if we break down our value to the consumer, we, we believe that 30% of our value to the consumer comes before the transaction ever starts, right? It's, it's the advice, it's the guidance, it's the planning, it's the helping them get their offer accepted and helping them save money on the offer, uh, being strategic in our approach and our strategy. Only about 10% of our value to the consumer is during the transaction, right? Because doing a mortgage just quite frankly, isn't that hard, right? It's, it's math. It's some calculation. Now, granted, some people do it much better than others um, from a service perspective and from a, you know, ease perspective and, you know, being right most of the time, but that can't be our value to the consumer, right? It, it, it's part of what we're supposed to do. Uh, we believe we do it better than most with our, uh, with our really, you know, aggressive client experience strategy. Um, but if you think about where the majority of your value is going to lie to your clients, we believe that 60% of a value that we provide to a consumer is after the transaction closes, uh, because that's when they need our help the most, because that's when they're not thinking about what they should be doing. They're not proactively planning for the future. Most people just buy a home, live in it and pay for it. And if you think about the majority of your clients, the majority of their transactions are emotional, right? It's, there's very few people that come to you and say, I've been planning for this for two years and we're now ready. It's just not the way our society is driven. And so we want to help the client, you know, in, in, in a multitude of ways. And so I'll kind of share my screen just to kind of show you guys what that looks like here. Uh, let's see. Share screen too. So, so I want everybody to connect the dots and I want you to be thinking about your experience right now. You know, is your experience a fee worksheet at the point of sale? Um, you know, what client for life promises do you make? Like, are you at the point of sale saying, hey, I'm going to coach you over time or advise you over time to make sure you always have a mortgage that helps you achieve your goals. Um, and now, I know a lot of people say that, but not a lot of people do that. And, and so, you know, think about what you're looking at right now. This is Ryan's, you know, platform to walk a family through the services that he provides in a way that, you know, he's not a loan officer. I mean, he's, a, he's, a, he's the head of the wealth team. I mean, yeah. when you really go through this, it's more value than a financial planner, a CPA. He is becoming the captain of the wealth team that serves the family. So I just want you to, he's going to walk through what he does. I want you to kind of like compare that to what you're doing today. And hopefully you're going to come out of this call. You know, we're about 20 minutes left. And you're going to be like, okay, I need to work on this. I need to work on this. Uh, so Ryan, walk us through this. Yeah, so you know. Dave, to your point, you know, we consider ourselves kind of a macro advisor for our clients. Uh, and then the micro advisors are going to be, you know, the estate planning attorney, the CPA, the financial planner, the insurance professional, you know, the family law practice, the construction contractor. Uh, but, you know, we, we tell the client how we're going to walk them through it. So when we, part of our initial presentation to the consumer, again, we break down into three parts, how we help you before, how we help you during, and how we help you after. Uh, this is obviously the after component. And so, uh, if you want to learn more about it, you can just go to artofhomeownership.com. Uh, you can read all about it. You can kind of click on all the things here and you know, it'll, it'll help you understand it. But this is what, you know, the, the mortgage professional site would look like. Uh, and our commitment to the consumer is that we're going to help them in five very unique ways. 
One is that every single one of our clients, we have a commitment to actually help them proactively keep their home in great shape and increase that home's value over time. Uh, and we do that with a home concierge service. So every single one of our clients gets a home concierge service where you know, a, a person will go to their home, they'll do a 300 point data analysis of the property. They will take pictures of all of their appliances, windows, uh, every room, they measure everything. They get all of the, the details, warranty information. And the reason why that's helpful is because every couple of weeks, you know, from the concierge team, they get an email saying, hey Dave, it's been six months, time to change your air filter. By the way, here's one you need, right? Or, you know, summer's coming, make sure to get your air conditioning serviced you know, for energy efficiency. And so we help the client think about ways to keep their home in great shape. And then ultimately, if they ever need any services, they can click a button, the concierge will help them find contractors, they'll get multiple accurate bids for them because they know all the specs about the house. And then when the work is done, they'll keep all the receipts, the invoices, everything will stay on file. Um, that way we can tell our client, look, we're actually going to help you for when you sell the home. You'll have a more valuable home when you sell it because the buyer will see all the work that's been done. They'll be able to see all the receipts. They'll have the vendor contact information. And then the buyer will take over that entire platform. Uh, so uh, I have it on my house. Our clients really love it. Uh, and it's been phenomenal. And it's no cost to the consumer. But it's just one of our commitments to help them grow the asset uh, and not just leave the asset alone for them to figure out. Because people don't proactively keep their home in great shape most of the time. They just fix things when they break and they kind of just live in the house, right? And so this helps them plan for that. It helps them set you know, goals. It helps them schedule maintenance. Uh, so really valuable service that our clients have come to love. Next is our monthly real estate wealth digest. Um, so, you know, I, I always think it's strange that people look at their bank statements so often, right? And they want to know how much money is in their bank account. And it's often not nearly as much as what's in their home, right? Because we know that 85% of the consumer's wealth is in their house. And so it's strange to me that people don't always know their net worth through real estate, right? And it's mainly because they don't know what their home is actually worth, right? There's seven different websites that have seven different values. They haven't looked at their mortgage statement in quite some time. So all of our clients know that they are going to always know what their net worth through real estate is, but more importantly, they're going to know what they can and should do with it. Uh, and this is what really kind of works in well with the TCA is because every month we show them an analysis of what they can do if they should do it. Uh, if they could access equity to buy more real estate, you know, what that would look like, how they can use their equity in other areas of their financial life. Um, so that will help them think proactively. It will help them set goals. It'll help them be curious. And then from there, they can click a button and engage with us. And we can then work up TCA, show them their options, show them what they can think about, plan for the future. Uh, and we always know kind of what our client's next transactional opportunity looks like. Um, because again, we can't think that the client is going to always be smart enough to know what they should do and when they should do it. And so if we just wait for the client to make a decision, we're going to have a short shelf life as professionals, uh, because the consumer, once they've made their decision, they're just looking for a transactional agent to get the work done. And the same thing holds true for real estate agents and lenders. So if we're really good, we're going to help the client decide or come to that realization before they were ever thought of it on their own. Uh, and that's when we really earn the business at that point. Uh, so our clients look at this almost 100%. We'll send out about 1,400 of them right now per month, and we get about 1,380 people opening it every single month. Uh, and then they click on it, they engage with it, and it keeps us really top of mind with the clients. So um, they see us every two weeks with the concierge service. They see us every month with the Real Estate Wealth Digest. And these are things that if you try and email your client every two weeks or every month now, they'll probably just mark you as spam or put you in junk. Uh, because you're not sending them anything unique to them. Uh, both of these strategies are very unique to them and it's something that the consumer actually wants. Uh, next is our annual financial review, right? So it's you know very similar to our, it's basically exactly the same as our initial review. Uh, so here we show them essentially you know every year. And, and, and the best part about this is that when we first sit with a client and we're talking about our post-closing strategy, we always ask, how, how good are you at understanding if you're always in the right positions when it comes to insurance and protection, financial planning, generational wealth planning, real estate planning, and credit and debt management overall. 95% of the people say, not great at it, right? And so we know immediately that they have a need for the value that we provide, right? And so then we explain every year we're gonna call because if Dave buys a home today, we'll take his picture and he's gonna look a certain way, right? But a year from now, two years from now, three years from now, his whole financial picture will have changed for better, for worse, or indifferently. 
Uh, and so we need to help him understand how to continue to evolve with that when it comes to his real estate and his finance. Um, so we go through these with every client every single year. The system plans it for us. The client knows it's coming. It schedules it on their calendar and on ours. Um, so every year we're learning about them. The generational wealth is probably one of the biggest pieces because most people don't even know what it means, right? To, to plan for your parents. You know, are you going to inherit money? Are you going to inherit debt? Are you going to inherit your parents? Uh, what does that mean for you, for your liabilities? Um, most people don't understand real estate planning or credit debt management. Uh, so we get into that pretty significantly. Uh, next thing we go over is our perfect mortgage promise. Uh, and we- Hey, real, real yeah. quick, before we go off that, I, I hope everybody listens to this. You're getting scripts. The way he's describing this is great scripting. So I highly recommend you re-listen to this. And imagine if you are having this conversation at the point of sale, you know, are you going to get rate shocked the same? Are they going to be committed to you? So it's helping you at the point of sale. And then for all you loan officers, I mean, we've been talking about how important annual reviews are, but if you're not educating and teaching the consumer the value of those at the point of sale, it's, you know, it's, it's just a, a sales call a year later. So it's just so important that if you listen to Ryan, he's educating the client on, you know, is this important to you? And, then explaining things so that it's clear that it's important to them. And, and by the way, for a client that just said, oh yeah, I've got all that handled, I'm wired, don't need that. Well, he learned that too. So now it's gonna create some context as to how he follows up with that family and how he delivers service. So anyways, I just wanted to connect some dots on that. Um, and then I also wanna, on the annual review, you know, the mortgage advice, a couple of people, well, one person asked, what's a TCA? It's a total cost analysis powered by mortgage coach. And, and that is a service. Like when you look at these services, that's one that's powered through a combination of good questions and personal connection and a total cost analysis. Is that right? Yeah. I mean, you know, we can't, we can't really do our job unless we have something to present to them. Right. So every year when we do the annual finance review, we need to present them with some sort of strategy or option, or at least let them know that they're in the best position they can be in. And that gives them the, the level of confidence to, you know, to feel good about themselves for that next year until we talk again. Uh, so really our, our goal for the consumer is peace of mind, right? That they're always in the right position, which kind of leads so, us to our- So, yeah. well, one last thing, because I want you guys to connect the dot. So the total cost analysis isn't just a proposal to close a deal. No. It's, it's a checkup. So even if they're well positioned and what they have is much better than the market, he's still giving the deliverable because he's given them that, that update. And, and, and we now have multiple CRMs, lots of solutions that will automate that update quarterly, annually. So, right. Anyways, continue. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure folks connected the dots. It's not just a proposal when it makes sense. It's something you present to each and every family as an annual service. Yes, that's correct. Uh, another thing is our perfect mortgage promise. So people don't realize the questions they're going to have. Uh, so we show them, right? Because we think it's really imperative for them to know that. And so I'm going to say, you know, Dave, I'm not sure if you're aware, but you're going to think about this stuff every month or every year. And it's going to, you know, you're going to ask, should I refinance? Should I pay down my mortgage? Should I convert adjustable to fix? Should I take cash out for any reason? And how should I do it? Should I move up? Should I move down? Should I, can I stay in my home? Should I sell and rent? Should I buy a second home, investment property? I mean, these are questions that every one of your clients in almost all of America is going to have almost every month or at least every year. They're just not going to know to ask themselves these questions proactively. And more importantly, they're not going to know the answers. And so back to my previous statement is where do they go to get the answers to these questions? If you're sitting around wondering if you, you should buy an investment property, wondering if that makes sense for you, would you call a real estate professional? Probably not, right? Because they're, what are they going to say? Yep, you should do it. Right? I mean, great, great, not all of them, right? But that's what the consumer thinks, right? The consumer thinks that you know, a real estate agent is a salesperson. They definitely wouldn't call a mortgage professional because they think that all we do is pre-approve people once they've already decided to get a mortgage, right? And so we need to really work hard to change the way the consumer thinks about us as mortgage professionals because we're not just people who give them debt when they ask for it, right? Now, when you are an art of home ownership, you know, certified professional, they see you differently. They understand that they, you know, you're going to come to them and bring them advice and guidance and not sell them anything and be unbiased in your approach. Uh, but when they see all these questions and they go, wow, I am just not going to know what to do when to do it. 
Um, and I'm really thankful that our mortgage financing team is going to keep us abreast of all these things. Uh, and then every single one of these things has basically a TCA that you build for it, right? Should you refinance? Have it ready. Should you pay your mortgage down faster? We already went over that. Adjustable or fixed? We have that template in there. So all of these things moving up, moving down um, are things that you need to analyze for them, put in front of them, and then help them set those goals, right? Help them set goals for the future. Every single one of our clients has a next anticipated transaction date. We don't get off the phone with them until we know, okay, what's next? When are we moving up? When are we moving down? When are we buying investment property? And it doesn't have to be exact, right? But it has to be some sort of goal. Otherwise, you know, what are we, what are we working towards? Uh, so clients love that part of it. And the lastly is just helping them maximize their wealth through real estate. Um, this is really good for helping people understand, you know, should they, you know, what should they do with the real estate they currently own? Should they add extra square feet and rent, you know, rent out a newly renovated space? Um, in this country, we're going to face a pretty significant retirement crisis where the average age or 65 is the average age it has 59,000 median retirement, which obviously isn't going to cut it. So families are gonna to have to figure out how to work a family dynamic into one property potentially. And then helping our investors uh, maximize their investments on their, on their property. So we had one client in San Diego, we helped him you know, basically convert five garages into accessory dwelling units. We showed him how to finance it. We showed him how we put him in touch with the design build contractor. He's now making $90,000 more per year because of our advice and our guidance. So when our clients work with us, I always tell everybody, look, you know, our clients don't work with us because we're the cheapest. Our clients work with us because we're going to be the most valuable person in their life when it comes to real estate or finance. And we will make you or save you 10 times the number that you're looking at by going with the cheap mortgage option. Because people think cheap or low cost is technically savings, but low cost with no value is nothing. Right? I mean, if you're a man on the call, someone says, do you want the most expensive suit or do you want the cheapest suit? The answer is neither. I want the best suit at the best price, right? And what that means is I want the most value for my suit. And that's what we explain to our clients that they're getting. Uh, we're very upfront that we're not the cheapest, right? I mean, Orange County is arguably one of the most competitive marketplaces in the country. So for us to be number one here, knowing that there is, you know, we're beating Wells and B of A and all these other people with incredible rates is a testament to the value we provide. And the fact that the client, once they know about the art of home ownership, they know they want it and they know they need it. Um, so, for us to be able to provide it is, is amazingly helpful. Well, this has been an awesome interview. We still got five minutes left. Uh, for anybody that's a mortgage professional that wants to learn how to be a, you know, a certified um, art of home ownership professional, where, where, what would they do? Where would they go? Just yeah. go to your website. You just go to artofhomeownership.com. Um, you know, if you're a mortgage professional, you can click here. Um, you get to add your real estate professionals on it as well. Uh, so you can put in your information here. Uh, hit submit. Uh, we have webinars that we'll do where we go more in depth as to how you use it, how it works, what you get, uh, what components of it there are. Um, so yeah, same thing we'd say to all of our clients. I don't care if you sign up for Art of Home Ownership or not. All I, know, all I care about is that you know well, what it is and if you think it will be advantageous to your business. Uh, it marries perfectly if you're a mortgage coach user uh, because, you know, the, the platform doesn't work without presentation software. Uh, and so if you use mortgage coach at a high level, you'll probably love this because you're, you're already an advice based consultant. Uh, you're not just a, a guy who quotes rates and terms. Um, so feel free to go here. Uh, we'll answer your questions and, and help in any way that we can. Love, love this. So um, stop sharing your screen. I want to show a couple things on mine real quick. And then I want to go into wrap up mode. Um, so, so guys, this has been an awesome interview and I just want to hit it home with everyone that, that it is time to go from, you know, a, a, uh, fee worksheet based mortgage professional where you're delivering a transaction, uh, and, and really delivering point of sale mortgage coach experience at the point of sale and, and then the hard home art of home ownership just takes it to the next level. So homework assignment for everybody, you know, get clear on your mortgage why, because it has to, in order for this to work, you really have to kind of like think the way Ryan does. Like, hey, I'm gonna walk you through my educational process. Don't know what the right decision is for you, but I'm here to just show you some ideas to build wealth with real estate faster. 
you know, this is a mortgage coach script. You know, Ryan's got his language, which, you know, check out his website to get it. But you've got to come up with your language. Also want to remind folks that we've got an awesome lead conversion playbook. I like I, you and I could have gone for two hours because I was like, yeah. oh, that totally aligns with the lead generation playbook or the mortgage coach lead conversion playbook. So a couple things for you guys to review after this. But, but most importantly, go check out the Art of Homeownership. You know, um, we put a link down below. If you're listening to the recording, there's a link down below. Um, so Ryan, you're going to be at Sales Mastery. I'm going to be at Sales Mastery. I think it's the second week in October. Is that right? That's correct. So, so guys, I can't urge you enough. If you have not already booked your room, like you're on the fence if you're going or not, get your room reserved, buy a ticket. Ryan, what are you going to be talking about from stage at Sales Mastery this year? Yeah, it's just the loan officer of the future. Um, one of my favorite questions to ask a loan officer is in real estate professionals is why you, right? When a client has hundreds of thousands or millions of opportunities to choose their real estate professional or their mortgage professional, knowing that we are not the cheapest, then why would someone choose you, right? And are you only going to help the people who already know what they want to do? Or are you going to help people who have no clue what they want to do? And how are you going to get to those people before they start thinking about it and before they start making those decisions. And so I think, again, the loan office of the future is going to add more value than anybody else in that client's life. And they're going to offer that value well in advance of the transaction and well in advance of the client making that decision. So the key is how do we all get there, right? How do we position ourselves that way? How does the consumer see us that way? And how can we get people to stop thinking when I want to buy or sell a home or when I need to refinance a mortgage? I need to go online and look for cheap because cheap is actually costing people more money than they know. It's just, they don't know why. Yeah, no, I, I am looking forward to seeing you and folks, hopefully you will, uh, if you haven't already committed to sign up for sales mastery, get on it. Link down below. Todd Duncan is putting, you know, an amazing event together of incredible presentations, um, keynotes and, and what I always say is it is a life changing experience. You know, I founded mortgage coach, on that stage and on that platform. And Ryan, I know it's been a, a very important platform for you too. So, uh, you know, we, we both kind of grew up in that platform. Uh, so we do not have time to get into the leadership questions, but Ryan, do you think we could schedule another, have you on another call and just focus on team and leadership? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to help and come back. Yeah. So I apologize for the folks that really wanted us to drill down on, Hey, how many people does he have in his team? What do they do? You know, um, but that really is, you know, we could do a day on that, but let's schedule another hour on it. So Ryan, this is your first time in the mortgage coach community. Any final thoughts, anything that you want to make sure people walk away from today's call with? Yeah, no, I appreciate you guys having me. Um, we're excited to, you know, continue to push the boundaries on what we do, right. And then kind of change the way that people think about us. And so, uh, obviously, mortgage coach users are already on the forefront of that. And so I think that, you know, us continuing to share best practices together, me learning from the mortgage coach community and our team, you know, trying to add value uh, is going to be something incredibly important moving forward. Uh, we can't lose sight of the fact that, you know, we, we get to choose one of two options, right? We get to be the cheapest or we get to be the most valuable. But being in the middle is not sustainable. Um, so choose not to be in the middle um, and ideally choose not to be the cheapest because we can't win that game. I love that. And one last question, one minute. If what advice would you give to yourself, like just starting in the mortgage business, you know, before you ever had a month where you closed 10 loans a month yeah. for any new loan officers listening, what's, what's one piece of advice that you have for, for new folks? Focus on the client, focus on absolutely blowing the client's mind with value and service and watch the opportunities that opens up. Uh, the client can refer you and will refer you to more people in their life than your best referral partners probably ever could. Uh, and as that continues to scale, if you really engage with your database and you really add value to your clients, there'll come a point in time where you never need a prospect again because the growth of your database will put more and more new transactions into your system every single month. And it will just kind of like a flywheel grow to the point to where it runs itself. Uh, and that's when you realize you've, you've reached the point in your business where you know, you've added the value you need to add. Everyone knows about it and everyone wants to be a part of it. Uh, and so that, that it only happens client by client. 
Boom. The snowball mortgage practice. It just gets bigger and bigger, building momentum. Ryan, I'm grateful for your time. It's awesome to have you as a leader in the community and uh, looking forward to the next call, brother. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate you having me. This call is a wrap. If you liked it, give us a like. If you loved it, give it a love and share it with your mortgage friends. And for all you managers out there, uh, I do think you should schedule a branch meeting and make this call a topic. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys.